So hey everybody, I'm in Conscious Chinas, Mexico. I'm on vacation. I'm in my happy place. If you all been on my channel for any length of time, you know that I am a Mexico lover. My husband and I come to Puerto Vallarta um, every winter for an extended vacation and that's where I am right now. We have been here for a month now and I have so many things I cannot wait to tell you. So I'll see you at home and I cannot wait to fill you in on, oh my goodness, everything that happened while we were here. So hey there, I'm back home. I'm home in Kentucky and I thought I would cuddle up with Maxie on the couch and tell you all about my month long vacation in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. You're not going to believe all the things that went on. First thing that happened in Mexico was something that I think a lot of you all had figured out. I dropped some hints, I teased a couple things, and yeah, my daughter got married in Mexico. Kendall and Tebow got married in Conscious Chinas at sunset. It was absolutely beautiful. It was a very intimate private wedding. It was only us and Tebow's family, a total of 11 people there, and it was just so intimate and absolutely stunning. They could not have asked for a better night, a more beautiful setting. We actually rented an eight bedroom villa directly on the beach in Conscious Chinas. So all of the family stayed there. We had a photographer come. We had hired a local florist and Kendall and I had had a couple calls with him. She had a vision board of exactly what she wanted the area to look like. And this florist did a phenomenal job. He came in the day of the wedding, set everything up, came back later that night and took it all down. And it was just, I just don't have words to explain to you how beautiful it was. My daughter's wedding dress was stunning. Tebow looked so handsome in his custom linen suit. And I got to tell you, I was trying to be in the moment and fully present and experience their wedding. And so I didn't take a lot of photos or videos. I do have a couple short video clips of things that went on because we were there for several days leading up to the wedding. And so one morning we had brunch and had champagne and mimosas. We went out on a boat trip so everybody could go snorkeling and see the Bay of Banderas. We went out to eat. We had a reception dinner. You know, all the usual wedding things. We just happened to do it in Mexico. So here's a couple quick snippets of videos that I took just around the villa, what we were up to. You can see some of the family members. And it just was a very, very special moment. And they had the ceremony at sunset, right before sunset, actually. Tebow's brother officiated the ceremony. He did a beautiful job. Oh my gosh, the things that he had to say. I'm a crier. You all know I'm a crier. So, of course, I cried in the ceremony. We laughed in the ceremony. It was just so touching and so lovely. And then after the ceremony was over, Kendall and Tebow went with the photographer down to the beach, got some beautiful beach photos and short videos, and then came back up and we had a dinner that was prepared for us by the house chef out on the terrace. And we had this beautiful, long, elegant table that was set out under the stars and the twinkly lights. It was kind of in the pool area. And this is really where the photographer got some good photos. I have not seen those yet. So when I do get the official photos, I will be sure to share them. I did take a couple myself, but you know, we did a toast. Each family member gave a little speech and said some things about the bride and the groom. And it really was just a beautiful night. So now you know that Kendall and Tebow are married. We're married. We're married. <laughs> so, like I said earlier in the video, we were in Puerto Vallarta for almost a month. So we went to the villa with the rest of the family for six nights, I think. And then after the wedding was over, we spent another night. We went out to eat. We did all of our, you know, fun things as family members. And then Randy and I, along with my youngest daughter, Brecken, and her boyfriend, Blake, we checked into our normal condo, which was up the street, and stayed there for the rest of the month on our vacation. So, some things that happened on our vacation that have never happened to us before. We've been going there for about 15 years, and only once in 15 years has it ever rained on our vacation. Well, this year it rained for three straight 
days. Now, day one and day two of rain, it wasn't an all-day rain. It was just gloomy skies, you know, not a beach day, not a go-to-the-pool day, just kind of gloomy, and you could feel the rain coming. The last day that Brecken and Blake were there, it actually poured down rain all day long. Not a little bit of rain, not a couple of hours of rain, and it went away, but poured the entire day. It was no joke. And everybody in Puerto Vallarta was talking about the weather. Everywhere you went, everybody you saw said, can you believe this weather? We have never seen weather like this in PV. What is going on? But once the weather rolled out, we woke up one morning and it was beautiful sunny skies. And every day for the rest of the month, we had complete sunshine total glorious sunshine and 81 degrees so yes there were a couple days up but the rest of the days were beautiful and you all know on my youtube channel i have lots of videos about my vacations in puerto vallarta every year when we go i put out about three or four new videos and so i have a pretty good list of videos about pv and it is funny because every year that i go back i get recognized on the street by more and more people because people are on YouTube. They want to go to Puerto Vallarta. They're searching, show me what to do in Puerto Vallarta, where to go in PV, you know, all the things. And my face comes up, my videos come up and I'm out and about on my vacation and people recognize me and come over and say hello, which I absolutely love. But every year it just seems that more and more people are now recognizing me. They know what time of the year I'm there and I kind of feel like they're on the lookout for me. So yes, during the month that I was in PV, I got recognized a lot. We were in Puerto Vallarta over Carnival, which is a really crazy celebration. It's a party. It Just think of it like Mardi Gras, but in Mexico, right? So this Carnival parade went down the street. Randy and I were in the streets watching. We were dancing. We were hooting and hollering. Everybody around us was having a ball, and the parade is almost over, and all of a sudden, I am grabbed by a woman who says, wait a minute. I've seen you on YouTube, and she starts talking and she wants to know if she can take her picture with me. And I said, sure, fine. Well, keep in mind, it's late at night. We are all drinking and dancing. Everybody is partying it up. She's got her drink in one hand and she pulls her cell phone out of her sweaty bra with the other hand and we snap a photo. Another night, Randy and I were standing on the street corner. We had called an Uber and two couples that were together on vacation stopped us and said, and oddly enough, it was the guy who recognized me, not even his wife, but he was telling me that he searched all these videos on Puerto Vallarta and saw me and was actually looking for me. He knew I was going to be there and he had his eye out and he saw me and boom, ran across the street to say hello. But I did get recognized on the beach, in town, at the farmer's market, on the pier, everywhere I went, every single day in Mexico, somebody recognized me from one of my videos and stopped to say hello. I did have a very unique encounter, something that has never happened to me before. Randy and I were out to dinner and we're just sitting there quietly eating our dinner and there is a family sitting next to us, a man, a woman, and a little girl. And the little girl was, you know, six or seven or eight years old. And I noticed that the mom and the girl were sort of whispering and looking at me. And it was very obvious because they were sitting right next to us, you know, right there. And at one point after we finished our dinner, my eyes happened to catch the eyes of the mother and the mother made a reference to my hair and she spoke Spanish and I, I kind of knew what she was saying, but not her exact words, obviously. And I said, thank you very much. And she said that she was wanting to let her gray hair grow out. And we kind of had a little chat about that. But then she said, do you mind if my daughter touches your hair? She really wants to touch your hair. And I don't know if the little girl was intrigued by the curls or the gray or both. But I said, absolutely, send her on over. So she, the little girl got up from the table and walked over and she just 
wanted to touch my hair and it was the sweetest thing. And after all the vacationing we've done in Puerto Vallarta and all of the whales and the sea life that we've seen, you all know last year I took you on a boat ride and we went snorkeling and we saw whales. We happened to come right up on a pod of seven whales mamas and babies and the whales went along with us breaching the water and blowing their spouse and it was one of the best moments we've ever experienced in Puerto Vallarta. Well that was last year. This year we rented another boat and took all the family members on that same boat trip and we saw a couple glimpses of whales nothing like before. We were actually able to see more whales this year just from the balcony on the villa, we saw whales at least once every single day. And we normally see manta ray and sea turtles, but never have I seen dolphins in Puerto Vallarta. I just assumed that dolphins weren't there because I have never seen them. Saw them so many times this year. Little, I don't know what you call a school of dolphins, a pod of dolphins, but groups of dolphins just jumping, jumping, jumping. And we were out on our boat trip and dolphins everywhere we looked. So seeing the dolphins was really neat and I can now add that to my list of things to look for out in the water. So I told you that we got rain for three days, which was no bueno. But what happened after the three days and the sun came out was something that was really cool. So Randy and I spent a lot of time on the beach. We like to go down to the beaches of Conscious Chinas. They're fairly private. Not a lot of people know that those beaches are there and we just hang out. We can spend hours. We can spend all morning or all afternoon just sitting on the beach. What do we do on the beach? We get in the water. I read a book. We drink a beer. We walk up and down the beach. We watch the waves. Nothing unusual, right? Well, after the storms had headed out, the big waves came in. One day on the beach, we saw the biggest waves that we have ever seen in our life. Now, I took some videos for you. I don't know that my videos do it justice because I'm standing on the beach looking at the waves, but these waves were absolutely incredible. We were woken up in the morning by the sound of the crashing waves. You know, you can always hear the ocean when you're at the beach, but the sound of these waves was over the top, so loud and all day long. And for two days, actually, the waves were incredible. So on the beaches of Conscious Chinas, there are huge rocks and boulders in the water and the waves were crashing way out into the surf and just rolling into shore and hitting these boulders and crashing up onto the beach it was beautiful so one day we did nothing but wave watch and then because the weather had been bad we were down at the beach one afternoon headed back up to our condo building and were alerted that we had no power the power was out well what happens in a condo building in mexico when there's no power you don't have any water either. The wind blew a tree limb over, which landed on the electrical transformer, which knocked out the electricity to our entire condo building and also the water. We had nothing to drink, we couldn't take a shower, and we could not flush the toilet. So how about that? Luckily, it only lasted about five hours the electric company was right on it, out there cleaning up the tree, replacing the transformer, and power and water were restored. So two more things to share with you about our vacation and then one really big story. So this year, for the first time, we took an Uber and PV. Uber's only been in PV for a couple years, and in the past, anytime we've ever tried to call an Uber, you're watching on your app, it would say your Uber driver was on the way, and they wouldn't show up or they would cancel the ride at the last minute. And we would just get so frustrated, we always took a taxi. Taxis are everywhere. Here comes one right now. They're readily available. You can stop on any street corner and put your hand up and you've got a taxi. For some reason this year, we overheard a lot of people talking about Ubers. So I got on my Uber app and I called an Uber once just to see if things had gotten better. Ubers are everywhere now. So convenient, so easy to use, and half. The price of a taxi. So for about the last half of our vacation, we took an Uber everywhere we went. And for the first time ever in Mexico, we experienced the fact that the American dollar has gone down in value. 
and that made almost everything we did during our month-long vacation quite expensive. So generally in the past, you could get 18 and a half pesos per one US dollar. This year, it was running about 16 pesos per US dollar. So that meant everything seemed more expensive to us. And on top of that, everything was more expensive. Restaurants have dramatically raised their prices. Our favorite little taco restaurants where my husband and I used to be able to go and have a beer or a margarita and some tacos and guacamole would cost us about 25 US dollars for all of those things. Well, this year it cost us about 40 or 45 US dollars. Everything was more expensive. Everything went up from street vendors to food to accommodations to Ubers and taxis. Literally everything has gotten more expensive. And I think a lot of that has to do with they've just raised their prices, but it also is related to the fact that the American dollar is less valuable now in Mexico. And this year I did something very unique. While I was away on vacation, I did not post a single thing on YouTube. I went silent. I went dark. I just needed a moment to recoup and a moment of quiet with my family and my husband. I wanted to celebrate my daughter's wedding and I chose to take the month off. However, I did post a few things on my Instagram stories. I know a lot of you all followed me over there and I did get many, many, many messages from you all asking where the heck I was. What happened? Was something wrong? Why wasn't I sharing videos? Where did I go? And that's where I was. I was simply away on vacation, but it's nice to know that you all did miss me. So now's the time in the video for me to share with you the one thing that happened in Mexico that I did not expect. And um, let me back up and give you a little info. So I told you earlier in the video that my oldest daughter got married while we were there. So my youngest daughter and her boyfriend who were in Mexico for the wedding stayed with us on vacation for almost another week after everybody went home from the wedding. So a couple nights into that part of our vacation, my daughter's boyfriend, his name is Blake, proposed to Brecken and they are now engaged. And y'all, it was the sweetest, 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 sweetest thing. So truth be told, I knew that he was going to propose to Brecken. Blake had come to Randy and I and asked permission. Of course we said yes. And I didn't know all the details of how this was going to go down, but I did know that it was going to happen in Mexico. So Blake actually gave me the engagement ring. I hid it in my luggage and got it to PV for him, but I didn't know when he was going to ask Brecken. When the time came, it was sunset. He took her down on the beach. She was wanting to get some cute photos in front of the water. She got a new dress while we were there. And Blake texted me and said, I'm doing it now. Film this from the balcony. So I ran outside. I was actually up in our condo getting dressed to go to dinner, set up my phone, and this is the moment that I was able to capture. Now granted, I'm far away. I had to zoom in the very best that I could, but I saw the moment that he proposed to her. Brecken just was ecstatic. The ring is stunning. Stunning. And then Brecken called me on her phone, told me to get my booty down to that beach and Randy and I went running and I was able to take some beautiful photos of them at sunset with the water crashing behind them and they were both just grinning from ear to ear and Brecken was showing off her new engagement ring and this is the new happily engaged couple. So when are they going to get married? Oh, hold on there. Not until 2025 at the very earliest. I don't think that I could handle two weddings in the same year and they're in no hurry. They're both just trying to get settled in from graduating from college and starting a new life together and finding a place to live and you know, all of those things. But it was just so exciting. He caught her so off guard and I couldn't be happier for them. So that's what happened on my month long vacation in Puerto Vallarta. It was a whole something. But as you can tell, I'm suntanned. 
I'm happy. I'm relaxed. I'm glad to be home. I missed my boys. Oh my goodness gracious. And they're so glad that I'm home too. And now that I am home, I will be back to my regularly scheduled content where I post videos on YouTube every Tuesday and Friday. And I did take quite an extended break from Instagram, but I'm back. I'm ready to get back in work mode and back into the full swing of things. So if you don't currently follow me on Instagram, I would love it if you did. Get my weekly newsletter. It goes out every Sunday morning where I share all of the things that you normally don't see on YouTube and Instagram. You will find them in my newsletter. And I want to thank those of you that continue to buy my cookbook even though I wasn't on social media. I wasn't promoting it. You all continue to buy it, and for that, I thank you. Since I'm now a three-time cookbook author, all the links to my cookbooks will be in the description box below this video so that you can easily download your version of In Renee's Kitchen. So now that I'm home, I'll see you back on YouTube. Have a great day.